Most people think there is no cause for crime, except the pure cussedness of the one they call a criminal. But as a matter of fact, there's a cause for everything in this world. And there's no way to remove the evil without removing the cause. There's a cause for all sorts of human conduct, just exactly as there's a cause for all the physical action of the universe. The real cause of crime is poverty, ignorance, hard luck, and generally you. These almost invariably combine to produce what we call a crime. When we look at the prisoners in the jails, we find that all of them practically are poor, at least nine-tenths, and these have always been poor. At least nine-tenths began what they call a criminal career as mere children, 11, 12, 13 at a time of life when the ways of life are fixed. Nine-tenths of them also are ignorant. They've never had the training that every intelligent parent would think was necessary to keep their child out of prison and make him safe in the community. All these things almost universally combined to put people in jail. The story of the so-called criminal is simple. He generally comes from a poor home. Orphan, half orphan, or parents who can do nothing for him. He's generally less intelligent than those who have a better chance. He either had no chance to go to school or else he did not care to go to school. And our schools are not fitted to give anyone a training unless it's the old line of training which only fits one for profession. Most of them that finally get their place in jail, have no taste for books, but they could take manual training. They could prepare themselves for trades or occupations. And the man of the trade or an occupation is seldom found in prison. Then too, hard times produce crime. Boys and men will steal when times are hard, who never would steal if they had a chance to make a living in some other way. What we need is a patient, humane understanding of the problem and a treatment such as physicians would give to the ill. And if that was done, we could get rid of crime, but we never can get rid of it by cruel punishment and rendering boys, hopeless and helpless. And the only, was the only thing in life, the commission of another crime. Mr. Darrell, in your opinion, what is the reason for the increase of crime in this country? I don't know whether there's an increase of crime or not. That's a question which can't well be answered. We do know that there's an increase in the population of our prisons, and a very decided one. The policy of America seems to be to build bigger and better prisons, just the same as bigger and better factories. This increase in the population of prisons has come about by the intense, cruel, 
unthinking hatred that has attended every effort to deal with the question of crime. It resulted in a great increase of laws and a lengthening of terms in prison. Crime doesn't depend entirely on what people do. It depends likewise on laws. For instance, one quarter of all the people in our federal prisons are there for selling liquor, which is not and should not be really a crime. Then, the fierce hatred that has been generated against the inmates of prison have made judges give longer terms. And juries find more men guilty and has put in the penitentiary more people entirely innocent of the act than ever before. It has likewise made the pardon boards give up their function and made governors afraid to release men in prison until a prisoner today can see written over the doors of the prison what Danny saw over the gates of hell, all hope abandoned, ye who enter here. This is peculiar America, the way we do everything in this land. In the last 10 years, England has closed and abandoned one quarter of all its prisons. It will abandon another quarter before another ten years goes by. England does not grow a panic because something happens. It has coolness, intelligence, and understanding. We often hear about the law not being forced in, enforced in America as it is in England. And yet we hang at least five times as many people as England does in proportion to our population and affairs. Nearly one half of everybody who received a death sentence at the hands of a jury in England is either paroled or have their sentence reduced by the other officials of the land. While no governor and few pardon boards dares reduce a sentence in the United States today. Sometime, perhaps, we'll learn where all this cruelty is leading. Law is another agent in populating prisons. This infamous unscientific law has been copied by many states. This law provides that after three convictions, under the fourth, one cannot be pardoned or paroled. It's of no value, of course, to pardon people who come right back to prison. But the fact that one has been convicted three times may simply show he had three poor lawyers or three cases of hard luck, generally beginning with you. And when there's one conviction against a man, it's easy to get a second and almost sure a third, whether he's innocent or guilty. Sometime we may understand it. Let us hope we will at least catch up with England and perhaps surpasses in understanding of these problems which are vital to the life of the state.